The purpose of this screencast is to provide a basic demonstration of how you can process a body of digital objects called a Submission Information Package or SIP through Archivematica from ingest to access. This is the Archivematica dashboard, which is the main interface between the user and Archivematica's digital preservation microservices. The other interface is the file browser, which I'm going to open up now to start the process of ingesting a SIP. To start the process, I'm going to copy and paste a SIP into Receive SIP. It's going to be drawn into the Archivematica pipeline in a couple of seconds. Going back to the dashboard, we can see our SIP here, Project Images, with a bell icon next to it, which means that it's awaiting the archivist review and approval. Clicking on it will open the list of microservices already completed. A complete backup of the SIP has been made. The SIP has been verified to be in compliance with the Archivematica SIP structure. That is, it has certain directories which are required for processing. Each object in the SIP has been assigned a unique universal identifier and a checksum. Any checksums that were created by the producer and ingested with the SIP have been verified. A Dublin Core metadata template has been added to the SIP to allow the user to add descriptive metadata. And the file permissions have been changed to allow the archivist to modify the SIP contents. When you're in the Archivematica dashboard, you can hover your cursor over the blue question marks to get some help text. This one says, check the SIP to make sure it conforms to your submission agreement. Delete any files not accepted for ingest. Add submission documentation to metadata submission documentation folder if desired. So let's have a look at our SIP. It's in the appraise SIP for submission directory. It has three subdirectories, the objects, which are the actual objects that are going to be preserved, logs, which will contain processing logs that are generated during processing of the SIP, and the metadata subdirectory, which contains our Dublin Core XML file and the submission documentation folder. We can open up the XML file. I'm not going to enter any metadata during this screencast, but you can see that there is already some metadata in the file, including a title, project graphics files, a creator, and a description. The submission documentation folder is for submission and transfer documentation. The archivist can add documents to this folder during processing, and these documents will be later be added to the archival information package and will be preserved as archival records. Going back to our dashboard, we're going to approve this for further processing, and you'll see that it goes through a number of other microservices. It's been placed in quarantine. Now, Archivematica out of the box has a demonstration 60 second quarantine period. In real life, you could extend that for as long as you like. It depends on how long you think you need to have your virus checking uh, virus definition updated. So, for example, you may want to keep it in quarantine for 30 days. I'm going to move it out of quarantine. We're going through a number of other microservices. Extract packages means that any zipped or otherwise packaged files have had their contents extracted. Sanitize file and directory names means that prohibited characters have been removed from file and directory names. And we can see that there has been a virus scan. If any object had failed the virus scan, the SIP would cease processing and be moved to a specified folder. We're now at Characterize and Extract Metadata. This means that Archivematica is identifying the file formats of the objects in the SIP, and it's checking them against external specifications to confirm that they're valid against the specifications. And it's also extracting technical metadata, which will be placed in the premise metadata file for each object in the SIP. 
We're now at appraised SIP for preservation. In the future, this second appraisal step will be supported by a technical summary of formats in the SIP. That is, information about what the formats are, any types of compression used, video and audio codecs, and any other information that, that will allow us to make preservation decisions based on technical considerations. For now, though, I'm going to keep this moving through the pipeline. We're at the normalization stage now. Archivematica normalizes ingested objects into preservation formats and access formats. In the archival information package, the original objects are kept alongside the preservation formats, and the access copies are added to the dissemination information package and uploaded to the access system. At this point, we can look at a normalization report. This shows us what's been normalized and whether there were any problems. In this case, there's been a lot of normalization that's gone on successfully. We do have one file, a CRW file, which is a raw camera format, for which there's no default normalization path to a preservation format. So what this report is telling us is there was no normalization attempted, but it's not already in a preservation format. So it's just telling the archivist that here we've ingested an object for which we don't have a default normalization path for preservation. At this point, I could go in and manually normalize the object, but for the sake of brevity in this screencast, I'm going to keep this moving through the pipeline. What's happening now is all the records in the submission documentation folder are being processed. So they're being extracted, they're getting UUIDs, they're getting checksums, they're being normalized. We also have a METS file that has been compiled for the SIP, and that contains all the premise metadata for each object. And we have had a DIP generated, a dissemination information package, which contains all the access copies that will go into the access system. So now we're at the stage where we can approve the upload of the DIP, which I will do. And we can also approve storage of the AIP. Let's have a look at our AIP first. It's in Story IP. What you're looking at is a bag. That is a SIP that has been packaged in accordance with the Library of Congress's Bagot specification. And in the data directory, you'll recognize the SIP contents. In the objects directory, you can see that there are normalized versions for the files. And here's our submission documentation folder. The original accession form was a PDF. It's been normalized to PDF archival. If we open the logs directory, we can see that there have been a number of logs that have been generated during processing. And this is our METS file, the one with all the premise metadata for each object. So I'm going to approve storage of the AIP. And in the meantime, we are going to look at some of the other tabs in our dashboard. We're in ingest at the moment. In archival storage, we can see a complete list of our AIPs. Clicking on one of the links takes you to the AIP. And these are sorted alphabetically, you can sort them by size, you can sort them by UUID or date, and at the bottom you can see a running tab of the amount of storage that your AIPs are taking up. Now this is the preservation planning page. This shows all the normalization paths for the objects that are ingested by Archivematica, and they're organized by media type. So here we have audio, and this is a link to the preservation plan for audio files on the Archivematica wiki. Here we have the various file extensions for audio files. We have the normalization description. In this case, it says transcoding to MP3 with FFmpeg, so we take AC3, we transcode them to MP3, and you can see the actual command. And the purpose of this normalization is access. So our access format for AC3 files is MP3. 
Our preservation format, on the other hand, is WAVE. When you click on Show Advanced Details, you can see more information about the commands, and you can also see a statistical analysis of the normalization that has taken place in Archivematica. So you can see the success and failure rate. You can see how many objects of a certain type have been normalized. So for example, for bitmap images, We've had 14 ingested and 14 normalized successfully. So back in the ingest page, we can see that we've completely finished processing our SIP. And we're going to have a look at the dissemination information package in our access system. So we can see here on the right hand side, we can scroll through the images. These are all uploaded access copies. Here's some metadata, the descriptive metadata that were added to the Dublin Core XML template. And we can navigate to the various objects either by clicking on an image or clicking on a description. And we can also add and edit metadata for each object. So that is Archivematica from ingest to access. Please keep in mind that this was a relatively simple ingest for the screencast. For more detail and information, please see the user manual, which is available on the Archivematica wiki at archivematica.org.